On Monday afternoons, you may have noticed a group of people standing in Newton Center with different signs calling for different actions around the world. Brian Dota stopped by to see what they're trying to communicate to the Newton community. On Monday, April 29th, the Newton Peace Vigil gathered to do what they've been doing since 2002, call for an end to war. Organizers from Newton Dialogues on Peace and War described to me their concerns, mainly calling for an end to U.S. funding of wars abroad, a ceasefire in Gaza, as well as complete global nuclear disarmament. Yes, well, I've lived in Newton for 38 years, and uh, this uh, organization, uh, Newton Dialogues on Peace and War, started after September 11th. There were a group of people that met in someone's home, and they wanted to try and find a way to stop war when they, when they saw that the U.S. was going to uh, uh, attack Afghanistan. And then, of course, they went into Iran, uh, Iraq, and so it was designed to to mobilize and have people. We used to have 50 to 100 people out here every every Thursday night. And now we're here on Mondays instead. But Well, every one of us is here for their own reason. Uh, some are here for anti-nuclear, stop war, or and uh, but basically it's to say that we don't want war. And we call it a vigil now rather than a protest. And so each one of us has uh, is compelled to be here every week once a week so it's been 22 years for me and uh, but for uh, the whole group is uh, works some people work with other organizations M mass peace action which is the largest and they're superior they do a great job and then some are with women's international league for peace and freedom and uh, uh, myself uh, I'm with women's international league for peace and freedom also uh, because I have my own project uh, with, that's to stop war and with women leading the way. And uh, the main objective is to unite the world, to, for everyone to join, not just women, but to say we don't want war anymore and we're going to do everything we can to stop it. And the uh, women can make it happen if they lead the way and invite the men. It's crucial. It's crucial. Uh, you know, I think there are a lot of people out there who share these beliefs, who feel that money and attention should be spent for people in need and at home. Uh, even here in Newton, you know, <laughs> there are programs that need people in need, even here in Newton. Uh, and that, that there are people out there who feel that, but they don't know what to do, you know. they. Uh, they feel that this issue is beyond them, that they have no voice, they have no efficacy. And so we're here to say, we stand up, we want you to join us, and that you do have a voice. There are a variety of initiatives to, uh, to try and put a, uh, the brakes on the nuclear arms race, because uh, uh, it really is a race. We have nine nuclear countries and Iran is on its way to be the tenth. So um, there is a uh, resolution that Newton Dialogues got passed in the uh, city council called Back from the Brink. And the provisions of that, I'm sorry I have to read it, <laughs> are to renounce the op option of first use of nuclear weapons. That's the idea of using a tactical nuke, which I described. To create a verifiable agreement amongst nuclear armed states to eliminate the nuclear arsenals. Take nuclear weapons off hair trigger alert. These weapons are on the edge of being fired all the time. One mistake, boom. One misread of what's happening, boom. And there have been several of these that fortunately were aborted in time. Uh, and the sole power of the president to launch weapons. He's got 15 minutes to decide whether he pushes the button. That is a very scary prospect. And having somebody who is tired, stressed, or unstable as Richard Nixon was, he was drunk all the time towards the end of his presidency. 
with a finger on the button, 15 minutes to decide, we're in trouble. I'm a member of the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom. It's a hundred year old plus uh, organization that's been trying to uproot the causes of war. It also has been trying to stop wars. We were very instrumental in the in formation of the League of Nations, very instrumental in the United Nations. Having said that, we know we're having a lot of problems in this area. And I have to rely on some notes right now because there's a lot to this. I understand that 190 nations signed the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. And you notice I have down here in the nuclear era. But guess which country did not sign? Israel. Well, India and Pakistan didn't sign either, North Korea. Um, but Israel is the problem right now, as you already know. And there's two parts of that to this. Somehow, we can imagine without too much difficulty, Israel has what I've been hearing through the grapevine and through reads, 90 to 2,000 nuclear warheads right now. And as you know, Netanyahu has threatened to use a nuke on Iran. This scares me a lot. There is a resolution in the House of Representatives called House Res 77, which is quite parallel to the back from the brink uh, provisions. And these are uh, leading to the idea of the Treaty for the Prevention of Nuclear War, the basis of which is to uh, have a global disarmament, uh, nuclear disarmament, uh, with verifiable uh, inspections, use of satellites, the same things that we use to verify that the Russians were not stocking up after the salt SALT uh, agreement. And that was quite successful. So there's a real possibility that that might happen. Uh, if, if only the uh, nine nuclear states would support the TPNW, Treaty for the Prevention of Nuclear War. And, um, and uh, it's really important for people to join organizations, become educated, and get some real understanding of the risks of nuclear war. And I have this little pamphlet here I'm trying to give to people, and I've been su successful in giving a few. <laughs> some people don't want to think about it. The overall message organizers wanted people to understand was the importance of having an intergenerational dialogue so that the next generation understands the importance of speaking up for peace. An intergenerational dialogue is super important. So, so true, we bring a history, we bring the, the time, you know, well, many of us are not working, so we've got the time. We have the organization, but also, we of my generation need to listen to and get the, the thoughts of your generation uh, because it is your world uh, and uh, we need to listen to you and there needs to be that kind of give and take and sharing with each other. It's, it's so very important. I don't know about what is te taught in schools now but uh, we didn't get a lot of important information. Uh, we just got what the uh, ruling class, in a sense, wanted us to hear in our history books. And that's very unfortunate. I, I, I applaud Howard Zinn for at least the People's History of the United States, a very honorable book that everyone should read. The. Um, I know Wilf is trying to integrate more younger people and we're doing it because we are aging and, and dying and we have a lot to learn
from people who are younger like yourself, as well as to share the information we've accrued over the decades. It's, it's, it's vital to carry on um, in a way that our world will continue to exist and change, and hopefully change for the better. To start your own dialogue with Newton Dialogues on Peace and War, you can find them most Mondays in Newton Center. This is Brian Dota for Newton News.